Hey now, let me tell you, pre-spawn cranking is great. Getting close to that spawn is still great. But this dude right here, yeah, that's right, the old magnet. The old magnet's the one that's reeling them in for us. It's a great transition time. Always look, because not all fish spawn at the same time. Hey, watch this thing to the whole end, because there's a big surprise coming. What a good day to be on the lake. It's beautiful, we've got beautiful skies. Great time to be here. Water temperature right at 59 degrees. That's what the Lawrence is telling me. So we're gonna have fish in all stages. Got a moon that's starting to show up. So we've got fish that are really wanting to go shallow, but I think we're gonna be able to do multiple things today and do multiple techniques with some pretty cool new stuff that uh, is available at Tackle Warehouse. Some Tackle Warehouse exclusives too. So, um, man, I'm excited to be here and get on this lake and do some fishing and see what we can do on the vlog today. So, got a big old Canadian goose out here yelling at me. Uh, there were pelicans on the lake here a minute ago. I think we've got a lot of activity here. I think it's gonna be good. First bite on the chick magnet. He loaded it. Hard pulling. Oh, that's a good one, guys. That is a good one. Just ran right at me. Get ready to see him. Get ready to see him. One hook. Oh, goodness gracious. Just barely ran out there and got it. Look at that fatty right there. Pre spawn. That's what a plug is good for this time of year covering a lot of water. That one just ran up and nipped it. What a way to get my morning started. Look at this one. Come here, sugar. Come here, sugar. Just barely hooked. She's not going, don't do it. Don't, don't, don't. Dog. She's going to jump. She's going to try. <laughs> now maybe I can get her before she does it. You got her. Look at that. Look at that moss. Uh-oh. That one might actually be on the bed there. She just ran out there and got that one. Barely got her, old root beer colored chick magnet. Good bluegill reference to the size of the bait, the shape of the bait. And I guess she thought she was running that old bluegill away from her. She was hooked a lot better than I thought. There we go. Look at that thicky, fatty, chubby, man. I gotta get him some more of that right there. You know, the chick magnet is a new bait. And it's always interesting to me when I get to play with a new bait or really spend some time with it, characteristics. It's a flat-sided bait. And normally, flat-sided baits are very, very flighty when you make the cast. The flat side, it catches wind, they're, they're hard to throw, but that's not so with the chick magnet. Being made of plastic, this bait was originally a balsa bait. We made it into plastic, now we can throw it. That's a big advantage on distance and casting with the bait. It also has a harder vibration than most wooden baits. And the depth gets just deep enough to get them just like that one. That's a good one, it feels like. Coming up, that's another big one. Golly, this one swallowed the whole plug. No, nope, she just barely nipped it too. That's why you've got to have this composite rod. When one's fighting this hard, it's barely hooked, corner of the mouth, that composite rod gives me a lot of advantage to land the fish. Well, that one's mad. Shaking that old head. Just barely nipped it. I mean, pulling it. Right, come here, girl, come here. Oh, it's on the outside now. Come here, no wonder. Gotcha. Gotcha. How about that? That's another nice bass. Look, they're just barely hung. But that's the thing about the plug. It's got a lot of vibration. 
That fish just came up and nipped at it. These fish are so ready to get on the bed, start guarding their homestead, that may be why they're nipping it. Or we may have to make a color adjustment to get these fish honed in on the bait that much better. Another good one right there. See that one little stick up there? That is a new tree that got blown in here with some of the storms we've had. That thing is just walking down that, that lay down tree right there. Just walking right by it. You know, the other thing about the chick magnet that I like is the profile. It's a really good profile in a bluegill shape. It's also a good shad profile. And then the buoyancy factor comes in and allows me to get it through that cover as well. Here's one. And I have thrown it through that tip of that tree 10 times. God, we had another. Oh, he came off. Doggone it. He just nipped it right at the end of that tree. That was another good fish, guys. That's the thing about it this time of year. They just, they're just nipping it. Again, we're hooked up again. That was another fish right in the end of that. And he, he's just barely hooked. Gonna have to make an adjustment on color. We're gonna make an adjustment on a hook. <laughs> That's one thing as anglers we are really bad about. We catch a fish on a given piece of cover, and we go on. Take those power poles, stop, take your trolling motor, stop, make multiple casts. Bass tend to want to be with other bass. And we had two other opportunities. Unfortunately, it didn't work out. They didn't get them in a the boat. But we had got two other bites on the end of that tree after that plug had been through there 10, 15, 20 times. I recall one tournament at West Point that I made 50 casts, at least 50 to one tree, and I caught a four pounder. I sat down, ate a sandwich, made another 50 casts with that 1.5, and caught another four pounder and ended up with a top 20 finish just because I stayed and made that cast. Important to make multiple presentations anytime you're successful. Got him. There's one, there's one, there's one. Oh, still just nipped it. Oh, God. I mean, pulling like crazy. This dude is trucking. Oh, that is a chunk right there. I gotta save the boat here. Get off the bank. Ah, we got another hook in. Nope. Either. Yeah, there we go. Now we got control of you. That's what. Gotcha. Gotcha, gotcha. Now, look what the way this fish is actually hooked. Just came up and slapped it on the outside. I made a change. I went and changed these hooks to two aught, or excuse me, number two short shank gamakatsu. And I would have never caught that fish without making that. Little adjustment. What a good one. Look how thick that fish is. I don't think these fish are ready to go. You know, that was another good fish. My crankbait setup is a, is a system, and I found that this works really well for me. What happens is we become better anglers. We get really in tune to what that crankbait's doing. And if that crankbait does something out of kilter, what do we do? We lean into it. So I've gone to composite rods or very slow action graphite rods so that when that crankbait is transmitting that down to me, my hand, which is educated, it's had a lot of time throwing a plug, that fish gets the plug and I don't feel it because of the slow transmission of the composite rod. So that allows that fish to get the bait a hint better. Today, they're just nipping at it. So with a stiffer graphite rod, he comes up there, he nips it, I set the hook, I missed most of them. I'm catching them now um, better because we changed the hooks on the crankbait as well. So I want a rod that has a moderate bend like that, moderate tip, and actually bends all the way down here to the handle. You can see this rod actually flexes down here. That parabolic action when I hook a bait with a plug turns into a big C, and it allows me to pull that fish without moving that plug out of his mouth. So 
The parabolic action is one thing. Gear ratio is important. Water's a little bit warmer here, 60 degree bubble right in there. And I'm actually having to move the bait pretty quick because the water's clear. I'm using a fast gear ratio custom light reel in a 7.5 to 1, and I'm using 15 pound Invisac to make long casts. These are good fish, so that 15 pound line comes in handy. But moving that bait quick, just like that one, you can see how this rod's all bent up. It's in a big C, that making that big C look. Oh, that's a good one too. That's a good fish right there too. That one's got the whole plug in it. Whole plug in his mouth. That was a long cast. Why do they always bite your crankbait when you make an Olympic cast like that? That's the way they always do. Now I can, now I've got him under control. I can wear him down and I can get this fish in the boat with no problem. This composite rod sure helps. Oh, he got it good. I mean, he swallowed the plug. Come here, baby. I'm afraid to grab him any other way, but this way. All right, okay. That one really got the whole plug. All right, let's get this one back real quick. There's probably another set of fish right there, the way that one bit it. Probably another bass right there. Look at that group right there. That is a good group of fish. Picked up a deeper diving plug to try to get to those. Where'd my fish go? There they are, right there. These fish are moving away from us out there in 18 to 20. But that's the thing that the active target is allowing me to do. It's allowing me to get a shot at, at least get a shot at those fish. Where I would have never known they were out there, now at least I'm aware they're out there. That's why when I'm out here, I've always got multiple depth of crankbaits that I'm throwing, shallow, mid-depth, deep, just to cover the spectrum. Just like that. Yep. Oh my. He's going out to deep water. Coming up, coming up. Yeah, coming up. I mean, he got that five. Coming up. I'm just kind of hanging on with this one, this one. This one's got the whole scamoli in its mouth. Golly, that is a pork chop. Look at that good fish. Look at that dude. That is a full grown Magnum model right there. Little M.M. Moongill and his breakfast come to me. Oh, that is a good one. There we go. Look at that pork chop. My goodness. I love a cranky bait. Especially that one. Cool. Did he smoke that or what? That is a straight up good one right there. That's why you have multiple options with them. I love a crankbait. Growing up here in Western Kentucky, we've done this, done this so many times. Get a group of fish fired up with a plug. You lend me a moongill action on there. How about that? That is the real deal. There. You love it when your plug gets scarred up like that from a great big one. Hey, if you've learned something or you like this vlog, give us a like and be sure to enter the gear giveaway where you can get some really cool lose and Strike King gear. Man, I'm telling you what, Hill Lim and Gill, that's a good one.